Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that uh, everyone could uh, attend today. Uh, I just pray, Lord, that if there are people still uh, coming to church, uh, that you would bring them safely. Um, oh, Lord, I know that there are you know, some people who are either about to leave, about to travel around, or are still you know, away uh, from here. Um, Charles, Kate, uh, and I'm not really sure about the situation with Georgiana, but I assume she's still uh, still away. And I just pray, Lord, that um, however they are, wherever they are, Lord, that you would um, really just watch over them and uh, just bring them home safely, Lord. Uh, and I also pray, Lord, that uh, today we'd have a good time of fellowship, a good time of worship, of praise to you. Um, and really just bless this time, Lord, that we have uh, with one another. Uh, encourage us to, to live a life faithful to you, according to your word. And I pray all this in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, uh, we're going to begin with some praise songs. So it would be great if everyone could please stand. Rise and stand together. First song we'll be doing is called Blessed Be Your Name.
Father, Lord, once again, thank you so much for this day. Thank you, Lord, for every day that we have uh, on this earth. You have given us life. And for those of us who reached out to, who have called to, Lord, who have responded to your uh, calling, I just thank you, Lord, for also the gift of eternal life. I just pray, Lord, that uh, as we read your word, as we talk about it, uh, as we think about it, that um, you would move our hearts uh, with the Holy Spirit, that you would open up our, our eyes, our minds to uh, who you are and what you have for us, Lord, your purpose, your plan for our lives. And I just pray, Lord, that we would accept it. We would accept what you have, Lord, what you have to say, what you have to teach, guide us in the way uh, the most holy, most righteous way, according to your word. Let's pray all this in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> all right. Um, as it's still currently July, we're still in the middle of the summer season. And I hope you all are enjoying your summer so far. Hopefully you've made uh, at least a few good memories. Um, so let's you know take a moment to dwell on those memories. You guys uh, think of anything good happen to you? Um, what good? What comes to your mind when you think about summer? Or perhaps just you know specific experiences that you've had over the past two months. Um, I hope and expect that most of your uh, thoughts on summer are going to be positive. Um, as there is a lot to appreciate about the summer that we have. Um, like the fact that most of you are still on vacation or summer break, right? Uh, and you probably will be for at least a while longer. <clears throat> uh, you have uh, maybe at least for some of you a few, a few more weeks, maybe two or three weeks left. Um, <clears throat> and regardless of that time that's coming up, I mean, you still had your whole summer to you know, perhaps do some things that you normally wouldn't be able to do. Some of you might be uh, hanging out with friends more often. Some of you may have traveled to faraway places that you really don't get to see often, even if you maybe not, maybe did not have the great, uh, greatest of times. It sounds like a lot of people who traveled didn't really enjoy their traveling that much. But, you know, it's, it's a place that you still won't really see often. It's a place that will still be memorable for you. Uh, whether it's uh, very positive or perhaps not as positive. 
Um, but even if your summer break hasn't been perhaps uh, a most wonderful time, not perhaps not the greatest time you've ever had, maybe it's not the greatest summer in your life, uh, maybe it's been a bit slow, and perhaps a bit boring, uh, you should still at least be at ease, right? Enjoying the beautiful weather that we've been having. I feel like we had a pretty good summer in terms of, of weather. I mean, there have been a few rainstorms, some showers from time to time, but overall they've been very short, uh, very quick, and uh, we've also had a lot of nice sunny days and what I call comfy cloudy days, right? Not too hot, um, but you know, still good weather. Uh, but of course, you know, it's not the perfect season. It comes with its own issues. And for me, one of the bigger issues will, will forever be bugs. You know, I, every time I walk outside now, I'm, I'm greeted by a new spider web that, that really shouldn't be there. Uh, I, I break it apart uh, the moment I step out and the next day it's back. Um, out on the grass or street, sometimes I feel like I don't know where to stand because like, I feel like if I just stand still, ants are just gonna start crawling up my shoes uh, because they're just all over the place. But mosquitoes have to be my uh, number one annoyance during the summer. Um, even if it's just going out for just a little bit. Like I feel like everything is kind of just fine in the beginning and then I just suddenly feel a strange new itch somewhere on my body um, that wasn't there before. If you aren't prepared for them, mosquitoes will come and get you. Um, and bug bite itches can always be troublesome. You want to scratch because it itches. But the, at the same time, you know that scratching doesn't really always stop the itch. Sometimes it kind of just makes it worse. Sometimes you just, you scratch and you scratch, and not only does the itch remain, but it also might get a bit, uh, you know, bloody. You might, you might have scratched a bit too much and make things worse. Today's message isn't really about dealing with bug bites, however. I just kind of just wanted to use that as an opener to, to get you thinking about the idea of scratching an itch. Because I want to talk about a different kind of itch that uh, we, as human beings, sometimes we just want to scratch. I'm not sure if there's a particular word for this kind of itch, and there isn't really any kind of specific um, thing to this itch, but I feel like you probably know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> sometimes you may feel fixated on certain things that you feel like you have to do, or maybe you just really want to do. Uh, if you ever seen the show Big Bang Theory, um, one of the main characters, a guy named Sheldon, he's kind of, according to the story, according to the show, he's this super genius, but um, he often has a lot of itches, these kind of itches. He obsesses about a lot of things, and and if he can't do what he really like, feels like he has to do, something he has to, he really wants to do, or he has to do it, he becomes very irritable. It's like he, he explains at one time that it's like an itch in your brain you can't scratch. He's an extreme example though because he is primarily a fictional character on a TV show and he's designed to be as quirky as possible. But I'm sure there are still people like that in the world, you know, people who who have things that they just feel like they have to do, or they just won't feel satisfied. And even if you're not like one of those people specifically, I feel like that's something that we all can relate to. In, in general, there's sometimes some kind of itches that, that, we, that we really want to scratch. For me, uh, I'm going to give this kind of weird personal example um, of an itch that I have, um, and it's you know, from time to time, I want to play what, what we call an MMORPG. This is like a, a game, right? This is a type of video game, if you guys um, are not familiar with it, it's a type of video game that you play in a virtual world, and the general idea is you kind of just, you know, level up, you accomplish tasks, and you're kind of just living in a virtual world. And it all stems, this itch all stems from my very first MMO RPG experience. It was back when I was in high school. Back when I was in high school, um, MMO RPGs were just starting to be a thing. It would. They had, I'm kind of old, so things kind of just you know happen like that. Um, things that we have now, you kind of take for granted. But this is something that 
back when I was growing up, this was kind of just starting to be a thing. Very few actually existed. And most of the ones that did exist during that time, uh, they're what we call pay to play with subscriptions. So you pay either a monthly fee or a, fee or a yearly fee if you want to pay, uh, if you want to play those games. Now, of course, being in a Chinese family, um, that's not particularly, you know, well, I feel like even if you were in a Chinese family, family that was wealthy, they probably still wouldn't pay for a subscription like that. But regardless, um, there was no way I could ever, you know, afford a subscription. No way I could ever even justify paying for one if I had the money for it. So for the most part, you know, I never got to experience a lot of these bigger titles that arrived at the time. Um, games like EverQuest or, or Ultima Online, if you ever heard of those. Like I said, this is probably out of the realm of most of you people. However, while I could only dream of playing those perhaps big and popular games of the time, that didn't stop me from looking for free alternatives. You know, uh, RuneScape, maybe you guys have heard about RuneScape. RuneScape is um, something that has existed for a long time. It actually appeared, around, appeared on the scene around that time. I couldn't get into it. But then I found out uh, about testing for a game called Ragnarok Online. Uh, this one you probably haven't heard of. Uh, when I found about, out about this brand new, at the time, MMORPG that featured, you know, anime-style graphics, and I, I was, like, totally on board. You know, I, I've always been interested in that sort of stuff, uh, even from a young age. And so it really, you know, appealed to me. I applied for it, and I got to test, join the testing. Um, test, the first test was just, you know, a, a little bit, you know, just a, they call, uh, there were two towns, they were just a little few areas to explore. There was so little content that you could actually just see everything there was to do in the game in just a few days. But to me, it didn't matter. What drew me in was that it was like a virtual life. And back, back in those days, like I said, this is like the, my first experience, but it was also the first experience for many other people. This was when, back when things were just really starting out. Many were experiencing this kind of style of, you know, just being able to go online and be able to interact and chat with just other people and everyone's kind of, you know, they got their own characters and everyone, um, this, this was like a first time for many people. And so when, when the open beta uh, finally arrived, the big open testing where everyone was allowed to join, uh, they added lots of content and just a lot of people, thousands of people, just you know, started joining in, playing it all at once. The virtual world was a huge place just waiting to be explored. And I was there in it with thousands of like-minded people. You know, it's very appealing to be in that kind of situation where, you know, just the, you know, growing up, you know, I was, you know, kind of the, the oddball out. But here in this online game, I could meet, uh, online people that had the same interests as me, people who enjoyed the games that I like to play, people who watched the TV shows that I like to watch. You know, a lot of people were friendly, um, and people were just, you know, the game itself actually didn't matter that much. The game itself was pretty simplistic, uh, pretty boring, but as a group, as something that was experienced and shared, you know, just where you could just, you know, talk to people and like I would, back when I was in high school, you know, I'd ask someone, you know, how old they were and they were also in high school and everyone was in like, everyone was kind of like the same age, same time, same interests. It was a very, you know, kind of lightning in a bottle moment. A few months later, the, the open beta ended and it was time for the game to officially open. But as the tradition was back in those days, it became pay to play. Which means, of course, I was no longer able to play. My first journey was over. But there was something about that first experience that, that stuck with me. I never forgot that first experience. There was always a lingering thought in the back of my mind that, you know, I wanted to be a part of something like that again. Because it was just, you know, just such a strange, pleasant, fun, memorable experience that it may sound strange to some of you that I came to feel deeply nostalgic for that kind of thing. A few years later, the MMO market grew. 
And it really just kind of exploded after a lot of big name games kind of just took the scene by surprise, World of Warcraft and, um, and RuneScape became even more popular and, and there was just, um, in the past, you know, games were always just pay to play because that was just how people, you know, they, they saw it, you know, you, well, if we have to, you know, build this kind of thing, we have to have people pay for it. So if you, so if another new MMO came out, you knew it was going to be pay to play. But then, you know, business people started to realize that, you know, free to play has its own merits. You can, you can get more people that way. And sometimes people might be willing to pay for things, right? Um, so free, these free kind of games started popping up all over the place. And I would check out a few of them here and there. Um, and every time I checked them out, you know, it'd be kind of like scratching that itch just a little bit. I would try to, you know, try to fit the, the, uh, that experience with my past experience. But every time I tried out a new game, I realized it was not the same. I would find a game that maybe was really similar in very in many aspects. And I would be like, oh, this is it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for this and I'm gonna enjoy this. But then I just play it for a little bit, and then I, you know, give up on it. I feel like, you know, this this is not what I wanted. This is not what I was hoping for. This is not the same. And I would do this every once in a while. You know, every every once in a while, you know, I, I you know, feel this itch, and then I'd be like, okay, maybe I'll just, you know, see, maybe there's something new that's that's better, something new that's greater, something new that will fill that. Um, that same, same, same void. But every time, you know, I tried, it wouldn't be able to stick. It was never the same. That experience would never truly fit, and I would try to scratch that itch. But that itch never entirely went away, no matter how much I tried to scratch it. It took me a few years to realize that what I experienced was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. It was just something that uh, I had built for myself in my own mind as to how interesting it was. But when I, what I realized was, you know, you can't have that same kind of experience ever again. The realization of this reminded me of a, a chapter in the Bible, and we're going to read that right now. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 2, 1-11. I'm just going to read it here. Um, of course, you could follow along if you brought your Bible. And it reads, I said in my heart, come now, I'll test you with pleasure. Enjoy yourself. But behold, this was also vanity. I said of laughter, it is mad. And of pleasure, what use is it? I searched with my heart how to cheer my body with wine, my heart still guiding me with wisdom and how to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was good for the children of man to do under heaven during the few days of their life. I made great works. I built houses and planted vineyards for myself. I made myself gardens and parks and planted in them all kinds of fruit trees. I, I made pools from which to water the forest of growing trees. I bought male and female slaves and had slaves who were born in my house. I also had great possessions of herds and flocks, more than any who had been before me in Jerusalem. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and the treasure of kings and provinces. I got singers, both men and women, and many concubines, the lights of, a son, of the sons of man. So I became great and surpassed all who were before me in Jerusalem. And also my wisdom remained with me. And whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I kept my heart from no pleasure, for my heart found pleasure in all my toil, and this was my reward for all my toil. And then I considered all that my hands had done, all the toil that I had expended, expended in doing it, and behold, all was vanity and striving after wind. And there was nothing to be gained under the sun. A few, few months ago, um, for, the, for those of you who, uh, you know, have been coming been around during our summer, um, we've been doing the Old Testament, and we did get to, you know, stop by Solomon, King Solomon. We had a 
uh, a message about Solomon's wish when God came to Solomon. You know, God approached King Solomon when he was very young, when he just became king. You know, his, uh, his David was gone, and now it was up to Solomon to rule this kingdom. And uh, God told him, "Ask me anything. Ask for ask for anything." And so Solomon, um, to to our surprise, asked for for wisdom. He he said. Well, you gave me this kingdom to rule, but I feel like I don't really know how to rule it. So can I have wisdom to rule? And as a result, you know, God was pleased by his request. Since he didn't ask for money or the death of his enemies or honor or anything like that, he just asked for wisdom. God said that he would give him everything that he didn't ask for. You know, wealth and honor and, and things that... Um, he, all the blessings that, that God could give, God was willing to give him. And the result is as you see here. In his quest for wisdom, you know, Solomon put many, many things to the test because he was able to do so. God had given him the resources to do so. And one of the things uh, Solomon tested of himself was to indulge in the pleasures of the world as he saw fit. Um, and perhaps this might be a dream of many people, right? To be able to do something like this. You know, he did every, well, we'll, we'll say we'll say lawful thing um, that a man could do in those days. Certainly not all the pleasures of man are lawful, but he did every lawful thing that he could do. And yes, back in those days as king, uh, he could have servants uh, slave, or slaves, as they say. Um, he built, he planted, he owned many slaves. He gathered plenty of wealth um, for the sake of just having it, you know. Uh, he, he hired entertainers to sing for him. Um, of course, back in, of course, because back in those days, you know, they couldn't just uh, record MP3s. Uh, he, you know, just call people, you know, sing a song, right? So he, he could do that. Whatever his eyes desired, it says he went ahead and pursued it. He held nothing back. So he could just, anything that he wanted to do, he had the power, the authority to carry it out. For us, we, we have things to look forward to, you know, as normal, standard, average human beings. Um, if, every, if things are not going well, we, we think maybe things will get better. If there is something we want, but we don't have, you think maybe, maybe just one day we can we can get it, you know whether it's uh, a, a job or 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 you know an item, you know the maybe the newest phone, bigger more expensive modern phone or or a bigger better house or maybe even a smaller house if you if you feel like it, um, but nicer, uh, whatever you know there's always something that we as human beings we're kind of just looking forward to something right. There's always something we can anticipate, we can search for, seek after, because we can't just get everything we want. But Solomon was different. Solomon didn't have that, right? Things were already going well. God gave him a prosperous kingdom. And if there was something he wanted to have or wanted to do, he did it. If there was something he wanted to have, he had it. Whatever ish he had within him, he could scratch. There was nothing withheld from him, being a wealthy, prosperous king. And you think, well, then he should be happy. He should be satisfied. But that was not the case. The more he accomplished, the more he felt that such accomplishments became pointless. Whatever he gained, he felt there was nothing for that gain. A lot of the pleasures that we can experience in this life, you know, they can be amazing when we first experience them, right? Uh, maybe when you first tasted of your first of your favorite food, whatever that might be, right? Um, you might eat it and think, "Wow, this is, this is amazing! There's nothing that can top this." And you, you might revis revisit that someday, you know, but it may not always be the same. It may not always give you that same feeling. 
or when you first watched that awesome movie that perhaps now you consider your favorite, or, or when you first played that game you really enjoy, or when you heard that song that you, you almost never can get out of your head. And when you first heard it, you might think, oh, I could listen to this a million times. But after you listen to it maybe a hundred times, you feel, oh, well, you know, maybe I can't listen to this song much anymore, right? There are some things that are just um, incredible that the first time you experience it, but even if you try to recapture that moment, it doesn't always work the way you think it would. Uh, maybe you had some incredible moment that, you, that you've had with friends or family, going to the beach for the first time, um, going out of state for the first time, going somewhere different and new, um, or just going someplace to just relax and hang out and have, have a wonderful time with the people that, that, that you enjoy having time with, spending time with. Whatever it is, whatever it was, um, there must have been some time in your life that you had an amazing experience that you would never forget. And it left a lasting impression on you. Uh, and in doing so, I think it would be sure to create a new itch, one that begs to be scratched, because people are always looking to relive the best moments of their lives. But even if you scratch it, even if you try to scratch it in any way possible, that itch will never truly go away. You will either find momentary satisfaction or maybe even a new itch in its place. Regardless, it is endless and tiresome. It is easy to discover new attachments to this world, but it is impossible to be truly satisfied by any of them. It's by nature, you know, our physical bodies uh, can never be completely satisfied. It will always yearn for more. Thankfully, there's more to human life than just the physical. While there's a part of us that can never be satisfied for as long as we live on this earth, there's also another part that can be guaranteed absolute satisfaction right here and right now. There's the spiritual, the undeniable yearning that we have for something beyond us, something that we cannot see or touch. In the Bible, there's a, a story of a woman who went to the well to fetch some water. She caught the attention of Jesus who was resting there. And Jesus told her this, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. When Jesus told her this, the woman was very confused. She had asked for this living water. She, she says, well, I mean, if you have this amazing kind of water where I don't have to be thirsty again, then just give it to me. She expected... Um, she expected to have the, that, that Jesus actually had some sort of miraculous water that would satisfy her physical body so much that she wouldn't have to drink another drop until the day she dies. She would be so happy for that because she wouldn't have to keep walking up to this well for water. But that's not the kind of living water that Jesus was talking about. Jesus, even though Jesus said, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, and whoever drinks of the water that I have will never be thirsty again. It's a different kind of thirst. With it, with this living water, we can be satisfied spiritually, and with it, we will find eternal life. The Bible may not uh, always be something that gives you whatever you desire of at this very moment. It won't fulfill every single pleasure, it won't help you scratch every single itch but it will give you what you need for all eternity. Let us close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for uh, once again, everyone who could be here. Um, it's always just you know, great to see new faces, great to spend time in the house of God, uh, in the family of God, you know, just uh, being able to have a certain connection um, uh, in my message, Lord, I, I talked about a certain connection that, that, that people can have, you know, with, with a community of people who are like-minded. Um, and you have given us that same connection. You have given us 
a, a community, the church uh, of like-minded Christians. I just pray, Lord, that we would become more and more like-minded, more and more unified in, in spirit, in love, uh, in your word, uh, that we may, uh, you know, really be able to uh, stick together, stay strong uh, in this world that is full of, of pleasures, of distractions, of, of enmity uh, against you, Lord, and against us. And I just pray, Lord, that um, we would remain strong in your faith. Please guide us every way, every path that we go in our lives, whatever happens. I just pray, Lord, that your hand will be there that uh, you would be there with us, that we would feel your presence every step of the way. Uh, be comforted by that. Uh, and I just pray, Lord, that if there's anyone here who has not yet taken part of the living water, that you uh, would open the doors for them. You know, just, um, it is not uh, a difficult thing, Lord, to, to join uh, the family, to join the church, to, to become part of you, Lord, uh, to receive this living water. Uh, as long as they are willing to accept, you are willing to give. And I just pray, Lord, that uh, they would, you know, just seek out uh, the, the leaders of the church uh, and, and ask to, you know, receive this living water and be a part of this uh, big, wonderful family of God. And I just pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.